4 over x. 4 over x equals 7 over 4 x plus 3. Outside or here? Oh, no. Yeah, outside. Okay. Good. Very good. So this is a typical situation in which I see x in the denominator. If I see x in the denominator, what type of equation is it? Excellent. Excellent. Good. So if you use my the method that I presented, you don't have to, but if you use the method that I presented, you should do this first for safety. What is left on the other side when I move these two terms to the left? Yes, indeed. Now the next step, so this was the first step, if you're using my method. In step number two, I have to write restrictions. There must be some restrictions. No, I shouldn't say must, because if I have x squared plus 1, there is x squared plus 1 is never 0. So if I have a, a situation like this, there are no restrictions x squared plus 1 will always be greater than 1. It will never be 0. So for this piece, I will not have to write restrictions for this situation. So forget that. I just wanted to take back the never. I meant always, right? It's not always the case, but most of the time we have the right restrictions. What is the restriction for this? Zero. Perfect. x cannot equal 0. What is the restriction for this? Careful. 4, exactly. 4 times x not, does not equal 0. It's multiplied. We divide both sides by 4. We still get x not equal 0. So um, remember, these are two factors. 4 is never 0, but x could be 0. Is that clear? So the only restriction for this problem is 0. Excellent. And now I would like, in step 3, find the LCD. What is the LCD? Remember, fraction line, equal symbol, and zero. If I forget the equal symbol and zero, I'm not solving anymore. I'm only simplifying an expression. Who cares? I need to solve for x. I have to get x by itself at the end and also check against the restrictions. So how many, of course, you can put 3 over 1. There is an invisible 1 in there. Uh, I observed a, one of my colleagues, she's out for uh, not promotion, but evaluation because she was hired I think two years ago um, so I observed her last week and I really enjoyed what she said um, about division by zero she doesn't say undefined which is the normal term she says this breaks math I really like that <laughs> so zero does not create, she used to say, zero does not create um, an undefined situation if you put zero here it breaks math <laughs> That's what she likes to say. I thought it was cool. Okay, so um, how many different factors we see here? Yes. One, four, and? And x. So what is the least common denominator? Well, to be honest, we do not consider one as a factor. So when I say how many different factors, you cannot say x twice. Because I asked how many different factors we see. Right? But I'm assuming, yes, I'm assuming you said 1 is one of the factors. So what is the LCD? Good. Good. So what do I multiply the top of the first fraction by? Very good. What do I multiply the top of the second fraction by? One. Very good. There is no change. If there is no change, I cannot multiply by anything. And then, what do you multiply the top of the third fraction by? Excellent. Now, can anyone give us the uh, numerator? Awesome. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. Do you all see the um, four, 16 minus 7 minus 12x? Yes? Yes. Please say no. Don't be shy if you don't see it. We understand this. Yes? I just don't understand because like, I have in my head, so 4x would multiply by 4 and get 16x. 
That's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. So the, the least common denominator is x. We multiplied x only by 4. If I multiply the denominator by 4, I cannot multiply the numerator by something else. So if I multiply the denominator by 4, I have to multiply the numerator by 4. Not by anything else that I think would be appropriate. Is that clear? Now here, 4x was not multiplied by anything. Or if you want to write, it's fine. If you want to write 1, it's fine. But here, 1 was multiplied by the whole thing. So that's the reason why I have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. Better? Yeah. So remember, don't start your homework before you redo the problems we did in class. Because you're going to get stuck. OK? And then may, you may run out of time, and then you'll say, oh, forget it. And I don't want that to happen. But if you redo the problems we do in class first, you will have no difficulties, or very little difficulties that we need to, or problems that we have to discuss. Very good. Now, the next step, number four, is put everything in descending order, negative 12x, and 16 minus 7 is positive 9. A fraction is zero in which situation? A fraction equals zero when? When the? That's it. You told me when the numerator is zero, so I just wrote the numerator equals zero. Great job. Now this is a linear equation. For linear equations, we have to separate the um, terms with x from terms without x. And how do I solve this? What is the final step? By? By negative. Very good. So 9 divided by 12, and negative divided by negative is positive. And now let's simplify 9 over 12 by? So x equals 3 fourths. My first concern, and that should be yours as well, is to check against this. Is 3 fourths 0? I know it's silly. No. So this is the solution. Any questions? Yes, please. So why don't we need the 4x anymore? A fraction is 0 only when the numerator is 0. Or, if you remember we discussed that last time, you cross multiply. This times 1 equals this times 0, but this times 0 is 0. This times 1 is on this side, equals 4x times 0 equals 0. Good. Other questions? Any questions on this problem, by the way? Any questions? OK. Anything else? Other questions for me, or will you continue? Yes, please. Should I ask about the work yes, any problem. Yes, we have to solve those problems in class for everyone to see. Okay. Uh, do you have it on anything? or I can bring it up um, if you tell me which type of problem. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to get exactly the same problem, though, if I log in. I'm going to get um, a similar problem, just the numbers will be different. And that helps everyone, right? I think that's just going to point it in to the formula. Easy. Yeah, that's fine. Let me log in. I should have done that, and so you don't have to wait. Just turn off the block, the pop up blockers, and it's still not allowing me. Okay, I had to. Okay. Take a look. I 
it just did that. Yes, it just did. Okay, uh, you said 1.2? Yes. Yeah. One dot two. What do I want to do? I want to preview. Okay. Which question? Perfect. Okay. So we have a line graph here. Um, shows the cost of inflation in some country. Okay. Uh, what cost ten thousand dollars in nineteen seventy five? Is this a problem? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the formulas are different. They change if you miss it. Right, right, but it doesn't matter. Right. The idea we were discussing the yeah. yes. Okay, what cost ten thousand in nineteen seventy-five? Uh, would cost the amount shown by the graph in subsequent years. Fine. Uh, below are two mathematical models for the data shown in the graph. In each formula, C represents the cost x years after nineteen eighty of what cost ten thousand dollars in nineteen seventy-five. Answer parts A through C. So, first thing I do. I say this is problem and I put this in my notes so I have I can go back to it at any point in time so I say um, I, I take notes on ten thousand dollars in 1975 I also say uh, write down um, X number of years since um, 1980 which means x equals 0 represents 1980. And I copy model 1, which is c of x equals 847x plus 15,074. And model, model 2, it's also c of x negative 2x squared plus 908x plus 14,458. Now let's look for a second at these two models. Um, can anyone tell us what type of function is the first one? Excellent. Can anyone tell us what type of function is the second one? Quadratic. Do we see that? What is the degree of the first one? One. Because it's linear. What is the degree of the second one? Two. Because it's quadratic. Is that clear? Everyone? Yes? Okay, now if we go back, and I, I, I'm waiting for a second for everyone to copy this. When I go back, you'll see it says the line graph, the line graph shows the cost of infl inflation in some country. So we're talking about a line. We're not talking about this model like two, because <coughs> that's quadratic. It's not a line. Yes, Kayla? The last number in model two, is it one four? One four four five eight. Okay. Sorry, my handwriting. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So the line graph shows the cost of inflation. The line graph. So we have a line here. It has nothing to do with the quadratic function. Okay. Um, what cost ten thousand dollars in nineteen seventy five would cost the amount shown by the graph in the subs in subsequent years? Fine. Below are two mathematical models for the data shown in the graph. I always read it twice. Uh, problem. In each formula, C represents the cost x years. So C, please write it down, C of x, it's the cost of um, uh, the cost x years after 1980 of what cost $10,000, yes, in 1975. Yeah, we have that. Good. Here's the first question. Use the graph to estimate the cost in 2000 to the nearest thousand dollars not easy right uh, of what cost ten thousand dollars in 1975 so I would zoom in as much as I can if it allows me okay so I see 2000 and I will read so let's see the unit here so so it's 30 so two, four, six, eight, ten. So it appears to be thirty-two thousand. Do we agree with this? Yeah. Okay. So let's write it down. So in part A of the problem, I found the point um, that went 
in the year 2000, I found 32,000. As an ordered pair, we are told that X is the number of years since 1980. So 2000 is how many years since 1980? 20. So the correct point is 20 and 32. Okay, why 32? Because the measurement unit for uh, the y variable is in thousands. So this to be understood as 32,000. Perfect. Moving on. So in the problem, it's, it tells me to round to the nearest thousand dollars. You have to be very careful because it may ask you to uh, write 32 or you may ask you to write 32,000. So you have to be careful. It says use the graph to estimate the cost to the nearest thousand dollars of what cost 10,000. So round to the nearest thousand dollar as needed. So I am going to write 32,000. I don't know if they want a comma or not. So I'm going to check the answer and hope that it's okay. Good. Now next, use model one to determine the cost in 2000 of what cost $10,000 in 1975. How do we do this? Would you do um, 847x parentheses times 20 plus? Instead of x, we will replace with it with 20. Exactly. Excellent. That's exactly what we want to do. So in part B, so in part B, we have the cost of 20 with model 1, 847 multiplied by 20 plus 15,074. So use your calculators or not. So 847 times 20 and plus 15,074. I got 32,014. This is my answer. Always correct me if I'm wrong. Round to the nearest dollar as needed. So I'm going to go back and put it in. Is this clear what we're doing? Yes? Okay. So again, I check the answer. I hope I'll determine the x value for that represent the year 2000. I already did. No, if you put 32, right. 74, it's 3214. It's 3214. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Sorry, I put 7 instead of 14. Okay. Are you happy now? Okay, thank you. The system is happy now. Um, that's it. That's part B. So be very careful. This was a perfect example. I didn't intend it, but it was a perfect example to make sure that you put in the correct number. Good. Any questions? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Okay, so then move. Uh, let's move um, on. And we had, we finished uh, one dot, no, we haven't started one dot six with other types of equations, correct? We just finished uh, one dot five with quadratic equations. Yes? Quadratic formula, factoring, uh, taking square roots, and completing the square. Do we need more examples from any of those? Or can I consider those done? Have we mastered those? Moving on. Uh, let's look at a word problem, though. OK, so I let you choose, of course. I love that. It makes my life easier. So we have the length of a rectangular sign. That's a possibility. Rectangular parking lot. That's another possibility. Uh, a pool. We're asked to determine something about a pool. Can you please turn that off? Can you want anyone turn that off? Thank you. Uh, we can look at a model, we can look at anything else. So let's choose a problem. You choose whatever you want to choose. Or I will. You only have four seconds to choose. Okay. 
because I don't want to waste time. The pool, excellent. Let's look at the pool situation. So this is problem uh, 149 on page 169. It's still 1.5, yeah. We're going to start after this. We're going to start 1.6. Okay, perfect. So a pool measuring 10 meters by 20 meters. Okay, here it is. 10 by 20, fine. Uh, is surrounded by a path of uniform width. Okay. So I'm going to show a path of uniform width all around it. Same width all over. Uh, we are asked to, um, if the area of the pool and the path combined, so the total area, total area, uh, they say is 600 squared meters. What is the width of the path? I'll get my tent up. So the entire area is 600 square meters, and we want to determine x. This is our x all around it. So how do I determine the total area? I have to have the length, and I have to have the width, because it's rectangle. So 600 will equal length times width. I want you to give me the length times the width. What is the length of the whole thing? Say it again. So from this point till this point, I have 20. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about this. 20 is between this point and this point. This is the 20. But that's not what I want. I want this. Can anyone give us the distance between these two points? How much is this distance? How much is this distance? Good. What is this distance? What is this distance? And what is this distance now? Why am I subtracting? Okay, one more time. I want you to say it. I mean, I can say it, but I want you to say it. What is this distance? What is this distance? Again, what is this distance? Thank you. What is this distance? What is this distance? Good. Perfect. Now I would like this distance. Somebody said it. Can you say it again? 2x plus 20. Indeed. A piece that is x, another piece that is x, another piece that is 20. When you add them up, that's what you get. Excellent. Great job. Now I want this distance, please. Two x plus ten. Awesome. Great job. Do you all see this? Is that a yes? Yes. Excellent. Well done. Good. So now let's multiply. How do I multiply these two? I have on one side. I'm going to move 600 to the other side. I prefer the numbers to be on that side. It doesn't matter, really. So, so yes, yes, yes. I'm ready for you to, to tell me what to write. Excellent. So this was this. Now here. Excellent. Plus 20x. 40x. 
plus excellent 4x squared plus 20x plus 40x plus 200 now let's analyze so we know what to do next we need to identify the type of equation because if it's rational I'll do one thing if it's linear I do something else if it's quadratic I do something else what type of equation is it excellent so we have to clean it up 4x squared plus 60x minus 400 equals 0 so 4x squared was, was copied the 20 plus 40x they are like terms so we add them up and we get 60x and then we bring 600 to the other side it becomes negative as we know so negative 600 plus 200 is negative 400 is this okay so far everyone good what will you do now so two key words I would like you to remember in any math class factor and the other key word is simplify these have to be in the back of your minds at all times so you should always always think either simplify or factor to simplify maybe yeah. okay so this is an equation it's quadratic what do you think I'm going to do immediately you mean divide both sides by four excellent I want the numbers to be as small as possible. I know it doesn't matter if I use the quadratic formula. Who cares? I put everything in the calculator and I'm done. But I really want to have the numbers as small as possible. To simplify it. Simplify it, in this case, means dividing both sides by 4. So then I get x squared plus 15x and minus 100 equals 0. Now this is completely cleaned up and I have four methods of solving. No one is indicated what to, you should do, but definitely there are two methods you should not think of in this situation. Which method you should not in this situation think of? That is always the uh, escape goal. We want that. We want that. That is always okay. Which two methods? Take the square root. Of course, it's not set up. Right. Excellent. It's not set up for taking the square root. I'm not going to worry about that. Good. What is the other one? Yeah, that I, I, mean, I didn't write the name of the first one. Or the first one. But the method? No. The method is factoring. No. Factoring, factoring is, is always possible if it, if it takes, if if the polynomial is uh, factor, factorable, it may not be factorable. But I should, I would always keep in mind to factor uh, because if it takes 20 seconds, I'm done. Of course, I will never. You have to push me and push me and you know push me as I need so often to apply complete the square. Absolutely not. Complete the square is not a method that we want to work with. This is useful for something else. And it's not set up with the taken square root. So the other two methods, factoring, if it takes 20 seconds, if it doesn't, quadratic formula. So you want to try to factor or you want to use the quadratic formula right away? It doesn't matter. Say it again. Okay, so let's try. Careful. So then we need two numbers whose product, remember, you have to go through the steps. It's already in descending order. Yes, no greatest common factor. I already took care of it. I simplified it because it's an equation. Uh, it's um, a trinomial, no special product. This is not a perfect square. Um, one is a leading coefficient. Yay! I don't have to worry about that. So one is a leading coefficient, so then the product will be negative 100 and the sum will be... Yes. Again, as I said, the numbers, 100 is not a difficult number to work with, but it's still a big number. So if you say, oh, forget it. Yes. So 20 and minus 5, perfect, thank you very much. We add them, we get 15, we multiply them, we get negative 100, excellent. So then, since the leading coefficient is 1, I can go ahead and write the factored form. What do I get? <coughs> so then x equals negative 20 meters and x equals 15 meters.
Of course, five. Sorry. I, I copied from here instead of copying from here. So that's not allowed. So indeed, you can always go back and check. So we will. So I'm replacing this by five and this by five to make sure that the area is 600. And I did not make an error, like I already was talking too much and I didn't copy the right thing. So uh, x cannot be negative 20 meters. That's not possible. Yes? So does it matter which one is negative? Because when we wrote it, we talked about that. If this number is positive, then this one has to be larger. You cannot get uh, the other opposite symbols and get positive 15 yeah, when you add. So x plus 20 equals 0, we have to move 20 to the other side, that's why it becomes negative, right? Solving the linear equation. So this is the product, the zero product principle. We have two factors. We set the factors equal to 0. I hope that this is clear now. And that's how we get negative 20. Is this okay now? And that's how we get the positive 5. So then we have to go back and check. Okay, so what am I multiplying? I'm multiplying 30, I don't need a calculator, 30 times 20, which is 600. So we know that th this is correct. So the width of the uh, uniform band, if you want, or path around a swimming pool is indeed 5 meters. Moving on to other types of equations. Ready? Yes, please. Can I? Go ahead. Can you repeat why you said it couldn't be negative 20 again? I didn't. Yes. I didn't hear it. No, no, no. But but that was not the uh, the answer. That was not the question. Okay. That was not the question. The question was here, not here. I anticipated, and I should have not. So um, x plus 20 gives us a negative 20, and x minus 5 gives us a 5. But I was what I was saying here uh, is that if the sum of the two numbers is 15, obviously. The, the number that is bigger in absolute value has to be positive. Okay. If, the, if the sum is negative 15, then the number that is um, in absolute value stronger has to have minus in front. So then we can get a negative answer. Okay. That was what I was referring to. But I, I thought it, the question was here, but the question was actually here. Very good questions, actually, but thank you. So uh, anything else here? Okay, yes, please. So when you come up with the answer is minus 20 and 5, you just pick the one that fits. You go back to the So the distance between me and you is negative 20 meters. You can't have it. All right, so you just pick the one that makes more sense. No, the other one is impossible. It's not that I pick the one that makes more sense. The other one is not possible. The distance between me and Chris is not negative 20 meters. There is no distance that is negative. Other time, yes, please. Yes. Is there something that we can do? X squared plus. This is not factor. We have to use the quadratic formula. So you have to put it in as negative seven plus or minus the square of forty nine. Minus 4 times a times c, two negatives will make a positive over 2. So you have to put in the graphing calculator or simplify it. Yes, please, one second. Hold on one second, don't forget. So, um, so it was uh, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 4, two negatives will make a positive. Negative 4 from the formula and c is negative 4. So then you have 49 plus 16, okay? Which is 65. And 65 is only 5 times 13. So you can take the square root from that. So then you get x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 65 over 2. There is nothing else you can do here. Uh, you cannot, you know, there is no need to separate them. You can simplify. Is this clear? So yeah. Is this okay? Please. So about a uh, graphic calculator. Yes. Like plug in myself. Exactly. I was trying to like, if you 
you teach me how to do it? Yes. I can find this that calculator. Too. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll teach you whatever you need. Okay. No worries. Is this okay? Is there a similar problem like this or something else? Was this the only question? No, there was another yes? Um, 6x plus? Six plus? Good. So you have to do this because it's quadratic. You have to set it equal to 0. And you can apply the quadratic formula again in the same way. Is that good enough? So the quadratic formula in this case will be 6 plus or minus 36 minus 4 times a times c. 12, 120 over 20. On the test, yes. Are you on the test you say solve by factoring, solve by quadratic? Yes, one time, yes. Okay. Yes, one time you'll have to know all those methods, yeah. And you may see the same thing one time on the final exam. Yeah, you have to know all methods. But in word problems, no. I will not indicate what method you use or the method you use. Apply the method you like. Um, and uh, when you solve a rational equation, and it turns up, you know, at some point in time, uh, after a proportion or whatever you write, and you get a quadratic, form, a quadratic equation, you, I'm not going to indicate. You do whatever you want. Okay, other types of equations. We have many, many different types. So what we know so far are linear, quadratic, and rational. Yes. So this is done. Now we're going to look at other types. Other types meaning the first one is polynomial. polynomial equations. And you can say, but what about linear? What about quadratic? They are polynomial as well. They are. But what I'm referring to when we talk about polynomial, we say degree greater than or equal to 3. So degree 1 was linear done. Degree 2 was quadratic done. What we are talking about now is degree 3 or more. So if you'd like to choose, if you have your book or you have your laptop, fine. If not, I will choose. We are on page 185. So, do you want me to choose? Okay, 4. On page 185, I only have 4x cubed minus 12x squared equals 9x minus 27. My first question is, what type of uh, equation is this? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I can't trick anyone in this class. Yes, of course it's polynomial. The second question, okay, I need my tent up here. I'm sorry. The second question is I would like you to tell me the degree of this polynomial. Three. Yes. And then I would like you to tell me how many solutions. Three. Of course. If the degree is 10, 10 solutions, if the degree is 3, 3 solutions, etc., etc. Even if they're all the same, I need to show three solutions. Is that okay? Okay, perfect. What do you think we, we should do first here? Set it equal to zero. Excellent. Polynomial. We have to set it equal to zero. 4x cubed minus 12x squared minus 9x plus 27 equals zero. Please remember, moving forward, it will help you, it will benefit you. When we move one term from one side to the other, we change, we change its sign. That's all we do. Can you continue writing minus, minus? Yes. Plus, plus, yes. But this is the bottom line. Okay. So now this is a polynomial. Is it in descending order? Yes. Greatest common factor? Four, twelve, nine, and twenty-seven do not have a common factor. Um, what is the only method for something like this? By. Let's go back to the strategy. Exactly. That's the only way for polynomials. 
So when we simplify or we take out a common factor, it has to be present in all terms. We cannot pick and choose. If it's not present in all terms, it's not a common factor. So what will you factor out from the first two? Say it again. Very good. What is left in parentheses? Good. What should you get from the other two? Otherwise, you can't continue. Excellent. And now, only now, I look. And now, please tell me what to write in front. Minus 9. Because negative 9 times x is this, negative 9 times negative 3 is this. Now, this is the first term. This is the second term. Both terms have a common factor, which is, and I want to pull it out. Excellent. What is left in parentheses? We know how to factor this. We discussed strategy of factoring a long time ago. How do I factor this? Yes. Very good. And then, how many solutions do you expect? Okay, perfect. So please give me three solutions when you're ready. And this is how we solve polynomial equations. Uh, three. Yes, indeed. And then, uh, three, over two. three over two. We move three to the other side. It becomes positive, and we divide by two. And then it's going to be negative three over two. Negative three over two. As expected, polynomial degree three, three solutions. Okay. One problem is far from being enough, as you know. I'm expecting you to practice between now and Wednesday and come back with other problems. So we know how to um, solve polynomial equations. They are, have degree 3 or more. Whatever the degree is the number of solutions, equals to the number of solutions we have to come up with. And we take everything to one side, present it in descending order, factor out or simplify not by x, but by numbers, not by 0, of course. Um, and then find the solutions uh, factoring by grouping and using the zero product principle. Is that OK? OK. So the next in line is radical equations. Yes, I agree. They are not very friendly. But you will, I will make them friendly for you. How is that? Just trust me, I will make it friendly for you. Okay, I need to, to uh, let me, let me turn.